Cluster munitions are indiscriminate weapons that can't distinguish between a civilian or a military target. My name is Megan Burke. I'm the director of the Cluster Munition Coalition. Thank you all for joining us today. At the time of use of cluster munitions, anyone within the strike area about the size of a football field is likely to be injured or killed. All cluster munitions have a failure rate. This is some percentage of submunitions that don't explode during strikes. These duds become de facto landmines that can be set off by anyone who finds them, including and even especially children, long after a conflict has ended. Tens of thousands of civilians worldwide have been killed or injured by cluster bombs. The Cluster Munition Coalition works towards a world free of cluster munitions. Our Stop Explosive Investment campaign contributes to this goal by tackling investment in producers of cluster munitions. It is informed by the research of CMC member PAX the Netherlands via the report Worldwide Investments in Cluster Munitions, a Shared Responsibility which is being launched here today. In order to limit the harm caused by cluster munitions, we aim to end financial investment in companies producing cluster munitions, urge states to adopt legislation banning investment in cluster munition producers, and to declare publicly that they consider such investments to be prohibited under the Convention on Cluster Munitions. We also aim to engage the public, governments, and the media on the broader issue of cluster munitions to strengthen the global stigma against the weapon. Recognizing that cluster munitions inherently violate international humanitarian law, countries and civil society came together to ban their use through the 2008 Convention on Cluster Munitions. To date, 119 countries have joined the convention. The Convention on Cluster Munitions bans all use, production, stockpiling, and transfer of all kinds of cluster munitions. More specifically, the Convention states, and I quote, each state party undertakes never under any circumstances to assist, encourage, or induce anyone to engage in any activity prohibitive to a state party under the Convention. We believe that the Convention on Cluster Munitions prohibition on assistance with the development and production of cluster munitions includes a prohibition on investments. States should explicitly acknowledge that the treaty prohibits investments in producers of cluster munitions and should put in place legislation that prohibits investments in companies that develop and or produce cluster munitions or key components thereof. To date, 10 countries have enacted such legislation. However, despite this, 20 financial institutions included in this report as having invested in producers of cluster munitions are from countries that have joined the convention. We encourage states to take all possible, possible measures to end these investments. My fellow panelists will discuss in greater depth what Canada can do in this regard. And we will also hear next from the co-author of the report, who will speak immediately after me. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name is Susanna Oosterwijk. I am from PAX in the Netherlands, and I am very happy to be here in Canada today to present the report findings of the 2016 update of this report. It's Worldwide Investments in Cluster Munitions, a Shared Responsibility. The first research of the report was published in 2009, and it looks at investments in producers of cluster munitions. The Convention on uh, Cluster Munitions prohibits assistance with prohibited acts, and we believe that investment would amount to assistance with production of cluster munitions, which is prohibited under the Convention. And besides that, if we decided to ban cluster munitions, why would we allow investments in companies that produce them? So the first report was published in 2009, an update followed in 2010, 11, 2012, 2013, 2014, and today the latest report is out in 2016. I'll be presenting some of the highlights of this report. The report is on financial institutions that invest in companies that produce cluster munitions. They are included in the Hall of Shame. There are financial institutions that have in place policies banning these types of investments. These are included in the Hall of Fame. And then we look at what states are doing to take action to ban these explosive investments. 
So the report looks at seven producers of cluster munitions. We list any kind of financial investment link to these cluster munition producers. The research period for investments is between June 2012 and April 2016. And for practical reasons, there's a threshold for investments in bonds and shares. So seven producers are on our so-called red flag list. These are China Aerospace, China uh, Science and Industry, China Aerospace Science and Technologies, Hanwa, Norenko from China, Orbital ATK, Pungsang, and Textron. And a company is listed as a cluster munition producer when there is sufficient evidence that the company produced or developed key components or cluster munitions or explosive submunitions since 30th May 2008, which is the day the convention text was adopted in Dublin. So the report reveals today that these um, financial institutions, that 158 financial institutions are included in the Hall of Shame because they invested in these seven producers of cluster munitions. Specifically, one company included in the report, Textron from the United States, produces a cluster munition that was recently used in Yemen. And we see that 49 financial institutions have invested over 12 billion US dollars in this company, which really underlines the urgency of our call here today for financial institutions to stop these types of investments. So of the 158 financial institutions in the Hall of Shame, 138 are from countries that have not joined the life-saving convention on cluster munitions. The vast majority is from the United States with 74 financial institutions, followed by South uh, China with 29 financial institutions and South Korea with 26. But very uh, worryingly, of these 158 financial institutions, 20 are from countries that have joined the convention. Um, there's four financial institutions from Canada, two from France, three from Germany, five from Japan, one from Spain, one from Switzerland, and four from the United Kingdom. So looking at Canada specifically, there's four financial institutions including in, included in the Hall of Fame. Um, I'm sorry, in the Hall of Shame. They are the Royal Bank of Canada, CI Financial, Manulife Financial, and Sun Life Financial. And in total, they have invested over 565 US million dollars. And of that amount, 180 million dollars was in Textron. We also look at good examples in the Hall of Fame. We list financial institutions that have a comprehensive policy in place, banning all types of investments in producers of cluster munitions. The Hall of Fame currently lists 38 financial institutions, and all of these are from countries that have joined the convention. Specific mention today is for NEI investments in Canadian financial institutions that has fully banned all investments in cluster munition producers. We commend NEI investments and we really hope that other financial institutions will follow suit. Then there are 46 financial institutions that have policies in place, but their policies contain certain loopholes. We commend these financial institutions for the steps that they have taken and we encourage them to close these loopholes so that we can include them in the Hall of Fame in the future. Compared to our 2014 report, there are five new financial institutions in the runners-up and there are three new financial institutions included in the Hall of Fame. Of course, states have a role to play as well. The report is called a shared responsibility precisely for this reason. Governments that have recognized the unacceptable harm that cluster munitions cause and that have joined the convention should make sure that financial institutions do not invest in companies that produce this weapon. They should put an end to the use of cluster munitions by drying up the capital to that flows towards producers of this weapon and thereby closing the circle. Ten countries have legislation in place banning investment in cluster munitions. And that is one more than was listed in the 2014 report update. Spain has introduced legislation in mid-2015. Furthermore, there are 28 states that have made it clear that they consider investments to be banned under the Convention on Cluster Munitions. So concluding, uh, concluding my talk, we see that leading financial institutions still invest in producers of banned cluster munitions. Financial institutions of countries that have joined the CCM, the Convention on Cluster Munitions, are still involved. The list of good examples of financial institutions banning these investments is growing. 
And a group of states that is legislating against these explosive investments or that is speaking out against it is also growing. And we call on all states to make it clear that they consider investments to be banned or put in place comprehensive legislation. And we urgently call on all financial institutions to stop their explosive investments in companies that produce cluster munitions. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Paul Ann. I'm executive director of Mines Action Canada. We are a co-founder of the Cluster Munition Coalition and very pleased and supportive of the Stop Explosive Investments initiative that the campaign runs. Uh, the goal of the CMC and Mines Action Canada is to make sure that no one ever uses these weapons. They are unacceptable. They're inhumane and indiscriminate. And whenever they're used, as we're seeing now in Yemen, the large percentage of the casualties, over 90%, is always civilians, and a great proportion of those are children. It's just an unacceptable weapon. In the six-year process, it took us to push the Canadian government to ratify the Convention on Cluster Munitions. Our message was very simple and clear. No Canadian should ever be involved in the use of cluster munitions at any time, anywhere, for any reason, for anyone. And we view investment in companies that produce these unacceptable weapons to fall under that category. It's a form of assistance. It should not be happening. So today we're very pleased that finally a Canadian company, uh, the first one, NEI Investments, has joined the Hall of Fame in the Worldwide Investments Report. That's a very positive step. But we also see four Canadian financial institutions that are in the Hall of Shame, and we need to move those over. During the ratification process for Canada and the domestic legislation that Canada brought in to ratify the treaty, the government made it very clear that investing in pr production of cluster munitions was not acceptable and would uh, contravene Canada's obligations under the treaty. We feel now with a new government, the Trudeau government needs to clarify that, needs to reinforce that message so all financial institutions understand their responsibilities to end the use of cluster munitions as well. And it is a shared responsibility, as Suzanne said. Governments and NGOs together need to work to ensure we stop this use, but the financial institutions themselves need to take some responsibility for this. Not just because Canada has joined the treaty banning cluster munitions, and not just because Canada's domestic legislation that says assistance is not acceptable, but because these are inhumane and indiscriminate weapons, and no financial institution should be investing in them. So we are calling on all Canadian financial institutions to change their policies and practices and move towards the Hall of Fame. We want to have the largest number of financial institutions in the world from Canada in the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. And now, Helene Laverriere, foreign affairs critic for the NDP, will speak to you. Thank you very much. Uh, Les bombes à sous, sous munitions, c'est véritablement une horreur, on le sait. Euh, c'est des armes qui tuent surtout des civils. Euh, c'est des trucs euh, qui laissent, qui ont des effets à long terme vraiment importants, qui ressemblent en fait, et le parallèle est toujours fait avec raison, euh, aux mines antipersonnelles. Euh, non seulement ça tue les gens, des dizaines de milliers, ça a tué des dizaines de milliers de gens sur la planète, mais euh, souvent ça empêche le, le retour dans des villages, le retour aux champs, euh, et ça crée des problèmes importants pour des communautés entières pendant des décennies. Uh, and that is why we must, must get rid of cluster munitions. This report today is a very important step in that regard. As we say in French, l'argent est le nerf de la guerre. By tracking the money and the investments that permit to produce and develop cluster munitions and, and cutting the flow of money is one of the great tools I think we can use uh, with regard to companies that still exist and countries that still, unfortunately, haven't adhered to the uh, Cluster Munition Convention. Um, so it's important. It's important work. I am a bit, uh, I'm happy to see that the Canadian 
financial institution is now part of the Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm a bit depressed, though, that there is still four Canadian financial institutions are in the Hall of Shame. I think that uh, it's it's more than our share, than the share that Canada sh should have. Uh, so this is why uh, it's very important that the Canadian government provides clear, clear guidelines for financial institutions of how to proceed to make sure that they understand the importance of not providing investment to companies that develop or produce cluster munitions. Alors, j'espère que le gouvernement va être à la hauteur des engagements préalables euh, du Canada qui disent très formellement que euh, le financement de compagnies qui produisent ou développent euh, des armes sous munitions est une forme d'appui à ces armes et va contrevient à la Convention sur les armes sous munitions. J'espère aussi que le gouvernement va euh, fermer les trous béants qui existent dans notre loi de mise en œuvre de la Convention. Et euh, je vous remercie tous pour votre attention ce matin. Merci beaucoup. So to conclude, um, it's very important that Canadian financial institutions understand that they should not be investing in providing financial support to companies that produce this banned weapon. It's also extremely important that the Canadian government make that clear, provide clear guidelines to financial institutions and, and make other changes, amend the existing legislation um, and make sure that Canada is a leader now uh, in, in the war effort to ban cluster munitions. Thank you very much. Sure. No, uh, landmines were uh, a much cheaper weapon to produce. There was not a lot of financial incentive, and there was a huge outpouring at the start, uh, led by Canada, to uh, uh, to create a stigma on the weapon and, and to legally ban it. So there was less need to do that. This is a more expensive weapon, uh, supposedly a much more high tech and effective weapon. We don't think a weapon that. Uh, kills and injures civilians at the rate this one does is a particularly effective weapon. Uh, and we need to ensure that companies that make this understand that they have an obligation not to produce such weapons and companies that, uh, like financial institutions, do not provide them the financial means to do so. Sort of precedent of the, of the government sort of withholding or preventing funds for any type of weapon? Um, I don't know if there's any provision like that, but as, as uh, uh, Suzanne said, there are fine, uh, governments around the world that have put into legislation the fact that they view investing in the production of cluster munitions as unacceptable and unlawful in their countries. Uh, in the existing legislation we have in Canada, that we did not get that provision in the legislation, and we would certainly welcome uh, a change that would bring that in, and that would certainly bring more clarity to the Canadian financial institutions. Countries are... Um, it's a great question. Um, so we have, when we started this campaign was in 2009, there were actually three countries with legislation in place, and we're now up to 10. So we really see this positive trend of, of countries speaking out against investments, but also legislating. Uh, specifically, 10 countries that have legislation in place uh, is now Belgium, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Samoa, uh, Ireland, Italy, New Zealand, Spain, and Liechtenstein. And in addition to these 10 that have really enshrined um, the prohibition on investments in legislation, there are 28 countries that have stated that they consider investments to be banned. And one of those countries is Canada, like Paul mentioned, that has said that investments in cluster munitions is prohibited under its uh, implementation legislation. Thank you.